Welcome to Toffee TV. We are joined by Hit Radio's Dave Fitty, Massive Blue, Comedy Dave, anything. Broadcast legend. Broadcast legend. Broadcast legend. Good to see you, boys. Director, everything. Film, I, TV, everything. I watch this all the time. I kid you not. I watch this as my guilty pleasure. When my missus. Why, do, why, whoa, whoa, whoa. why does this have to be a guilty pleasure? <laughs> because, because my missus isn't into football. I have, I've taken her to Goodison oh. a couple of times, but she's not into football. No, I don't see why she's not into football. She's took her on the holidays. <laughs> in, in recent time, you can understand how it's turned her off. Yeah. But often, if she's having an early night and she's gone to bed, right, and we finish watching the couple of things like First Dates and whatever, and MasterChef and all these other things that we watch together, I will then use this as my chance to catch up on Toffee TV. So actually, right. to be here genuinely in the studio is, is, is weird and quite exciting. Made up to have you. Did you have it? We can we cut that down for an advert? <laughs> cut that advert. To, uh, cut that out to get advert. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dave Vitti, put that on the poster. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Vitti says it's quite <laughs> exciting. <laughs> it's quite exciting. <laughs> After I've watched first date, yes. I've watched TV. <laughs> That's right. That's where we That's where we done. After Master Chef, it's my favourite <laughs> show. <laughs> it's one of my third favourite things yeah. to watch on a Tuesday yeah. night. That's all right. That's That's only brilliant. on a Tuesday. Brilliant. Night. Dave Everton. Why? Why Everton? Uh, fam How Everton? Family. My um, my dad, who's sadly not around anymore, um, was a massive blue. Um, he was from the other side of the water. He was uh, from a family from Prenton originally. He moved out to Eastham. And, uh, and so he was a big blue. He used to go and see Everton whenever he could. And then when he couldn't go and watch Everton, he also used to go and watch Tranmere as well. He used to go and see his local oh, side. So it's very much a family thing. Through my dad, through other family, um, I had a season ticket for about five years in the paddock, along with my cousin Paul, um, which I sadly had to give up two years ago just because I wasn't getting to enough games. Yeah. And, and there was a time when I used to try and make it work, and I used to come up and down from London where I was working more often, but it just got to the point where each game was costing me about 200 quid, and I just thought, this just isn't feasible, and I, I now need to sort of go on a... On a on a pay as you play basis, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's one of those. It was uh, it was a family thing. It was passed down, and me and my dad used to go to a lot of games. We used to go to Goodison together, but we'd also go and see a lot of games in London as well, and go and see the ways with a group of people that I met through work twenty odd years ago. A load of exiled scousers down in London, and so we just take it in turns to get the tickets, and it'd be like, right, well, you sort out West Ham, I'll do the Chelsea ones. Anyone fancy Southampton away or whatever <laughs> yeah. or Leicester? Yeah, we'll do that because that's that's doable as a yeah, day yeah, thing. Yeah. And we just go around and we do Spurs away, West Ham away, Arsenal away, the lot. And um, and so it's been a huge part of my life and something that's very enjoyable and very special. Can you remember your first game? First game was with my dad and I think it was something like 1981, 1982, something like that, and it was Stoke. But I can't remember anything about <laughs> what happened. I just, I just know that it was, it was, it, it was, was Everton there. Stoke, um, and it was. I'll be honest with you, it was one of those things that because my dad moved out to Hong Kong in 1969, he got a job. He worked in telecoms, and he got offered a job in Hong Kong, and he didn't even know where Hong Kong was. And anyway, him and my mum off they went on this two-year contract, and they went out there for 25 years. So I was born there. And I was brought up there, and it was only when um, it was really when I came over to college in Warrington. I did a media course in Warrington, just down the road, and that was when I could start going to the games yeah. regularly. And I think that's for me where it became really, really special because mm -hmm. it was a tangible thing then, and I could just go with cousin Paul to a game on a Monday night, or we could go on a Saturday, or we could do whatever. And and then you suddenly feel this real sense of—I mean, I don't need to tell you—but you know the real sense of belonging and the reason why this club is special. Because once you're there, it is a family, and you you're sucked in, and things never change. It must be difficult that in in going to make you sound old now. In them times when it was black and no, in them times when obviously you should know. Thank uh, <laughs> you, Elvis. Uh, when you um, when you you know you're exiled, so to speak, yeah, yeah. because obviously nowadays it's it's very very easy to yeah. to get access. Yeah. You know, watch yeah. games, see a lot of highlight packages. Then obviously, it was, what was it? World Service for your yeah. dad and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was. I mean, I, I remember watching the 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 cup final in 84 mm. on the TV in Hong Kong with, with my dad and a couple of friends of my dad who'd come over and um, 
and I was, you know, I, I was watching that, and I felt sort of quite grown up watching it with, yeah. you know, with 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 the dads and things. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was, there was there was plenty of football coverage in Hong Kong, okay. mm. um, yeah. and as you say, radio and TV and whatnot. But but for me, for me, going the game is it's just the whole it's the whole day out, you yeah. know. And and if I go to a game and I haven't gone. To the spellow for a pint beforehand. <laughs> it's not the same. You know, everyone's got their routine yeah. and where they drink, where they park, where they go and get fish and chips yeah. or a butty beforehand or whatever it is. And as I say, for me, you follow in what you've been what you've been taught. So we always drunk in the spellow. We still do. Always stand in the same place. Normally just outside the side by the steps or whatever like that. Unless it's pouring with rain and then you have to go stuck in the back. And um, and yeah, if you don't do that part of it, it doesn't feel like the day's complete. Mm. Because you haven't done your normal. Because you routine. haven't done the normal routine. I feel a little bit cheated if we don't do that. <laughs> Incomplete. Yeah, but that's it, isn't it? It's a going to matches. This is the thing. I think this is the difference between people, maybe older fans, like you. No, like all of us. We like, it, like it, us, Baz. Like us. Yeah. Like yeah. it, it, yeah. it, it, you know, just don't let this hair. You know, this, don't even touch that hair. <laughs> there's two. There's like I think there's a modern thing where it's just like what people have a sense of going in the game it's just about the game where this you've been going in the game for years to be honest going to watch Everton the last bit is the game it's the uh, it's the you, whole day you, you might you might it's the only time you might see certain people yeah well you no know, I mean, completely it's the only time you see certain people you know there's, there's members of my family that I only see at the game right okay and there'll be you know my my cousin Alison who I only ever see at the game yeah and, and I'll either arrange to see her outside the Spello at about quarter to three or if she can't make it in, she normally goes for a cup of tea in the church. So I might see her on the church on the on the way past, you know, on the on the on the, on the corner of yeah, Gladys Street yeah. and, and, and Goodison Road, and have a quick chat. How are you? Yeah, all right. Yeah, mum and dad, all right. Yeah, all good. Right. Okay. See you later. And that's and, it. and yeah, it, it's true. And, and you do, and you run into, and you know, you also run into people at away games as well that you've 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 met mm. going to Goodison, and then suddenly you'll see them in the pub at West Ham away or wherever it might be. Um, yeah, it's a complete thing from waking up in the morning and being excited and, I don't know, you know, what are you going to eat for breakfast, what time are you <laughs> going to set off, who are you going to meet beforehand, because it does, it lasts from the moment you wake up until yeah. you get back and then arguably even longer because depending on what the result is, whether you do or you don't want to watch a match of the day or something, you yeah. know, sometimes, sometimes that day is... is Ended a lot earlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then there's other times when you do genuinely yeah. want to stay up yeah. and actually see how it was covered on match of the day. Not not that often in in the last no. season, but you know, no. in in days gone by. Isn't it amazing that still now with all the football coverage we can get and we can have and we can have on our phones, you still want to see how match of the day cover your game <laughs> if you've yeah. had a good get you how you want to see. Not only a cover, but how they speak about your. Exactly. It's mad, isn't it? Exactly, because you want to, you want to see how, because that's still the, the platform, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. still the show, um, above all else. And even when you've got things that you can watch when you want on Sky, etc., yeah. etc., et and you can choose different feeds, but how you're described on Match of the Day by the likes of Lineker or Shearer or Wrighty or yeah. whoever it might be is really important and and when they start saying things like Evan are in trouble or Evan are in a mess yeah. or whatever like it hurts yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel the same when Tony Gale says it it <laughs> 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 only, st only starts making sense when they say it oh we are in trouble yeah oh, we are nice. but <laughs> also you know when there's been so many games recently or certainly in my head where we've been on TV a lot and we've been on TV a lot and played really badly. Mm. And you think that this is the advert for, for people yeah. who, for people who, who, who and like myself, and I do it as well, you know, I'll go and watch on the telly in the pub, I'll go and watch Spurs Man United, I'll go and watch Leicester versus here, whatever, because mm. I know it'll be a good game, mm. you know, because I like watching football generally, not just yeah. Evan. And so you know that the same way around, that if these Spurs fans, and they might watch us against City or whatever it is and you're just there and you're thinking we just haven't given a good account of ourselves no. and what they've seen for that 90 minutes is frankly shit you know <laughs> and, it's, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and it's not it's not a decent enough advert for I, I do feel though when that happens though you, you you do feel like you get the sympathy of those fans though yeah. which has happened a lot more recently which is even worse when they start going yeah. how do you watch this every week I, I do I feel like that I it, it's it's, I suppose it's like your pride getting dented because yeah. it's your club, and then you're like, 
why aren't we perform? I always feel like that when we play the other side. It's, yeah. it's you know, why, you, we why could be playing you? really well, and we play against Liverpool and Anfield. We don't look like we've ever kicked the football, no. and you're going, no. You know, or or, or if no it's on live, you think in this and, game's going out it, on live. It's it just terrible. looks like deja vu again the whole time because you just think that we've been here before, we've yeah. seen it so many times, and you go into you go into every derby with that optimism, even if it's going massively against the run of play in terms of the the, the form over the last few mm. weeks. But you think derby form goes out the window, all the other cliches, and you think this might be the time. And then it's just not again. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem to go the window recently. Ooh. Anyway, so bright new dawn. It is. Yeah. But before I ask, before we talk about that, right? When you were on the the Radio One Breakfast Show, mm-hmm. what did it feel like when you when obviously it was a massive show? I used to love that show. I used to love listening to you. The same way that I like listen. You, the way that I love listening now to Andy Bush on yeah. Absolute, yeah, yeah, yeah. or he brings up Everton. Yeah. He's brilliant the way he does it. Yeah. Um, but. For a while there, you 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 become like Everton really tapped in to 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 you. And I remember when they give you a season ticket for your birthday. Yeah. And they came, I think Sharpie came down and was yeah yeah. yeah. And and if you ever got anything off any of the people on the show, it was always like Everton related. And you were. Can I just say by the way, I only had the I got a season ticket once. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't living there on a freebie for yeah. for year on year. If you were, it doesn't matter. No, but 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 no, but. Uh, <laughs> Joking aside, for me, you know, it's important the yeah. fact that, yeah. you know, I, I spoke to him and I kind of said, I want to get a season ticket. I know where my cousin Paul sits. I want to be round there somewhere. And and, and they, they they got back and they go, you won't believe this. They go, there's a free seat, the row in front and one to the side of him. So he's literally there. And I was like, right, I love it. And yeah. and they very kindly sorted, that sorted out. it out for one but season. What did that feel like going from being a fan to suddenly, like, you know, a focal point for Everton and, and actually... Uh, Driving conversations at times because I tell you what, one of the best ones ever. It was when uh, Everton beat Leeds, and I think it might have been the Rooney one actually. Yeah, was it the Rooney one? Was probably the only. And you were you were on that. Well, that was that was Rooney and Milner as the two. Yeah. Was that not the one? Or, or no? No, but I'm sure when we beat them one one nil. Right? Two years. On it was the a London, Sunday yeah, night, one, wasn't one, it? One yeah. nil, and I remember not the next one day. Nil, yeah. yeah, I remember the next day putting it on. And it, were you, was it the mornings? Or, that was the afternoons because when you were on afternoons, oh my god, you couldn't shut you up about Everton. <laughs> but when you went on to Brett, well, the pit, you couldn't shut the whole show about yeah, football. But yeah. obviously, when you went to breakfast, yeah. there was obviously there's more stricter rules yeah. about what you can yeah. talk about. Um, but it might have been the afternoon actually, after, and it when, could have been. when it was a lot more playful. I well, thought we, we we did we did that afternoon show from ninety eight through to 2000 back in the 2003 yeah, we started no. the breakfast show January yeah. 2004 so it was somewhere it, within there I can remember being I can remember being I remember being at Ellen Road and both Rooney and Milner were the two youngest was, yeah, players. Yeah, they were yeah, both six, that was the season they were after. both 16 yeah, and that wasn't was it the, one each did, one they, each, did yeah, they yeah. score each they both scored, yeah, right. yeah. and I remember also being I remember being at Ellen Road where we beat them 4-0 I think and Dave uh, Dave Watson uh Steve. Steve Watson, Steve Watson. Scored, scored a hat yeah. trick. Uh, yeah. Um, which, sorry, yeah. Coulson That's when Rocky Junior's shirt was destroyed by Duncan. Beg your pardon. Yes, but I just right, remember right. that one because I remember the next day I was going into work. I, I think I was on a late shift in work and I just remember, like, I think the show might have started with Zed Cars. Hmm. And I was just like, this is amazing. This is Radio yeah, yeah, 1. Yeah. And they're like, Proper hype and Everton up. But and the it, thing was, we we didn't we could we could pretty much do what we wanted to then, and that was the beauty. And, yeah. and things things have changed a lot, oh, obviously, yeah. You know, and and so nothing to do with 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 me. It's to do with with uh, the restrictions on radio, etc., yeah. etc., yeah, et yeah, yeah. and compliance and blah blah blah. And you can't just go, oh, we'll start the show with that now because it's got to go through various different committees <laughs> of people. Yeah, but yeah. but genuinely, in, in those days, it was as simple as that. Is that yeah. You know, if 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 Leeds had won or whatever, and Moores might start the show with with the Leeds United song, and, and I might kind of go, I want to start with Zed Cars with <laughs> my birthday, so we'll have the Zed Cars or whatever it may be, and yeah. and, and you could, you know, yeah. and we all did that, and Dom on the show was a big Liverpool fan, yeah, and yeah. so we we used to share it share it out, um, but it was, I guess, there's never been that many people in the media who are famous Evertones, no. I suppose. You know, and and yes, there are a few, and, and Andy Bush, as you said before, on on Absolute, um, and me, and and you know Porky, and, and and stuff like that. You know, on on Talk Sport, but 
I suppose we're we're a, we're a small a small group. You know, there's always there's loads of Man United fans yeah. everywhere, and there's loads and there's of Arsenal fans, and there's loads of Liverpool fans, there's always Liverpool fans. But, but I it, suppose it was to more me of a, though that was that was the that was the thing though, wasn't it? Because I would have put it on just to hear you talk about it. That's what I'm saying. That was, was the like point. Everton on radio. Because the biggest radio there. show, yeah. any everywhere. Yeah. It was the no, it was a proper time as well because obviously. That time was, you know, late nineties, coming into the two thousands. Yeah. Everything was happy in the, it was in the re- country. It was a really buoyant time, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? You know, without sounding too sort of, you know, culture about it. it. But it, it, it was, yeah. you know, in in terms of football and music and everything. Yeah, yeah. When you think back to who we were and where we were in the late nineties. I certainly do. I, I, I think of it as a really, really happy time. You know, I started Radio 1 in 1996, um, age 22. You know, so th- those times, sort of 22, yeah. 23, 24 years old, was, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. It was really good. And with Ro- obviously with Rooney, um, you know, especially for that game, it just seemed like we were such on an up and up. Yeah. And then to hear that it was being spoke about on Radio One and on the Breakfast Show, or, or you know when yeah. you were, it was just it, it just felt like because for so long that was in the middle of our six one nil wins, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like the third but for for Everton not having that media yeah, presence yeah. Yeah. and for everyone else, and then to suddenly be plonked into Radio One. You know, it was no, I mean you know listen, it was it was always for in that respect and in, in every respect it was a real it was a real privilege to to do what I did and 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 I've always said. You know, I've been a very lucky boy. Um, you, you, you get opportunities in life, and, and I got an opportunity. I, I joined the BBC. I managed to sort of through the back door, and I managed again through another back door to get to Radio One, and and that was a dream come true. But I never ever wanted to be on the radio. I just wanted to. I wanted to write. Just write. I just wanted to write for the radio, right. um, and and writing has always been the thing that has has given me the most pleasure. You know, I suppose I'm a writer first, and, and anything else second, right. and 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 the the. The broadcasting thing, which sounds very grand for basically talking rubbish on the radio, but so um, right, we've done it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know that that side just came about because of the nature of, of the show with yeah. Miles and the fact that everybody was was kind of a, a character oh, to to a certain extent. Yeah. yeah, and 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 that's the way it was. But for me, and and I can genuinely say this, like one of the one of the proudest moments above all else, having been sort of getting away with doing this for like the last twenty years is when when I had my first article published in When Skies Are Grey. <laughs> and cause I used to write for when I used to write to When Skies Are Grey a lot. Yeah. You know, and me and my dad would be there and we'd be talking about what was going on and who we should be buying or whatever, you know, yeah. in this is sort of in the mid nineties. And and it was an outlet potentially for me to write, you know, and I used to write these letters. And I used to write them under pseudonyms because I was suppose I was too I was too embarrassed of possible rejection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to write under awful uh, pseudonyms I think one of them was like Roger Andouch or something (laughs) like that you know and there was probably Filippo Fish or some you know just really really awful things and and I remember because you didn't know whether it was published until you literally you know you you buy it outside the ground and you go for a pint and it'd be there in your ass pocket and I remember queuing up in, in the pub for a pint and there was this big six foot kind of like you know shaved head like big shit house was there and, <laughs> and he was there and he was reading my article and as I was there and I looked over and I saw it and I just for me yeah that was really special and I'll never I'll never forget that and actually amongst all the things that I've been lucky enough to do over the years that's still up there with with the best of the best my missus is in the uh, in the when skies are a whatsapp group is so she? there you go she she gets published in there quite a lot <laughs> so she likes you you, she, can, you can write for our website if you want or you can do whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> no but I, I just thought that was a I thought that was a brilliant time as you say it was, it was a brilliant time well it felt like a lot of us were, were more con- were it, was, t- it was nice and, and, and you know the, re- the reaction and I've been again been really lucky touch wood is that you know I've never I've never got any negative yeah. stuff when I've seen people out and about you know I, I don't get the certain people that are divisive in mm. terms of you know love or hate type of thing and, and whenever I've whenever I've seen anybody got a few of them out. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I've seen anybody though at, at the game yeah. at Goodison or away or anything like that it's always been really nice and been really friendly and if anything the only I used to find it a little embarrassing only because I've just never really been a kind of like look at me sort of person. Yeah. I go to the match and I'd, I'd sort of want to be as, uh, what's the word? I, I, I don't want to stand out. Yeah. I want to stick my coat on like everybody else and be there and just watch yeah. the game. And then 
to on occasion get recognised in the away end mm. at, at Upton Park or somewhere like that and then of course once somebody does and they all start nudging like, who is it over, over there and then you're almost just thinking oh god is it because because then that's the other problem is that sometimes people will really politely kind of come up and say can I have a photo with you so you do but then you kind of think god I look like such a knobhead here you know as if like sort of standing in the away end like doing pictures ba- Baz gets that in the, in the urinal <laughs> <laughs> it does genuinely all the time not all the time, but like, it is at service stations. I have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have had it a few times. Yeah. The weirdest one was in Disney World. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah I had one in Alcatraz. Someone taking a picture of you. Somebody, somebody recognised you from Toffee TV in, someone in Alcatraz. Someone out, yeah, and on, in Hollywood Boulevard as well. It was just like this is surreal. Yeah, you, you have no idea mad. how 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 your presence is spreading over around don't. the world. Absolutely. So, have you ever has, has anyone from the club or have you had a, a, any ambitions to sort of? Take what you've done and go. You know what? I'll go. I'll go into football, or I'll go and work for Evan. You know, become the next DJ Spoonie, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Spoonie, if you're watching. Um, a lot of Reds do. A lot of yeah, Reds, lot of Reds do watches. Yeah. Jealous of what we're about. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've quite fancied in the past being involved in the club in in some capacity, mm. but. Um, just, just never really necessarily been been the right thing because know? it's because when Chappers was on Radio yeah. One, I know he is a proper broadcast journalist, but yeah. when he was on with Scott Mills, it he was essentially what almost what you were doing on the yeah. he was he was I mean he was brilliant yeah, he, yeah. and he still is brilliant. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I love to watch his work. I think he's and I think where he's gone mm. with the NFL stuff is brilliant mm. as well. He brings that, uh, but you never seen that for yourself because obviously that wasn't you. You know where he's gone. You never thought, well, you know what I could do? Because again, Colin Murray, again, he's another one when yeah. he was on Radio One, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And then the next minute, he's doing, he's into the sport, and I can understand why he's yeah. gone into it because it's his passion. Do you, did you never feel like, well, I want to follow my passion rather than? I think you know, as you say, Chappers is a good, good case in point because you know we used to do stuff together on Radio One, mm-hmm. and you know we 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 met whenever it was 20 years ago no 18 years ago whatever sort of just before Euro Euro 2000 in, in Holland and Belgium and um, he was doing the sport for our show and we were going back and forth doing that and that's how we got to know each other and subsequently we did various different comic relief challenges and and, and, and just become yeah. mates and we, and we still are I, I, I was I was babysitting for his kids two <laughs> nights ago because because um, been up in Manchester for Hits Radio, and, yeah. and I know that he's he's going to Russia next week. So I'd said to him, I said, "Listen, I'm up all week. I'm kicking around in a hotel like Alan Partridge." <laughs> you know, I said, "If you and if you and Sarah, your wife, want to have a night out before you go off to Russia for six weeks, I said, I'm more than happy to come and look after the kids." So I did, you know. Yeah. And um, no, we've 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 always been close, um, and and still are, and uh, and I see him sort of more now than than I ever did. But anyway, he's. He, he was always somebody, because he was a journalist first and yeah, foremost, yeah. you know, before he came to Radio 1 and started messing around with Scott Mills, yeah. he, was a, he was a decent BBC trained journalist, yeah. um, and he's got an encyclopedic knowledge of, of all sports, not just football, but his cricket knowledge is amazing, and, and, and everything, you know, he, he knows something about, and he was always destined for good things, and, and the opportunity to move to Five Live came up, yeah. and he went for it, and he's proven beyond all doubt that he's... He's well. He's he's just a quality broadcaster. He's be- do you know yeah. what? I'm not massively into NFL, yeah. but I'll watch it when he's on it. And I'm be- not either. I don't fully understand yeah. it, but you do. You watch it um, because because he's good. He simplifies it as well. Yeah. Like he'll, he'll, I mean, doesn't dumb it down to the point. And that's what's really good about him because actually he keeps both audiences. Yeah. You know, the yeah, people yeah, who yeah. are hardcore that hate things being explained to them yeah. as we do as football fans. Yeah. I mean, imagine watching a shot a sport your sport and having it explained to you every five minutes imagine they do you watch the football and you're like and this is how the offside rule yeah, is done yeah, 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 and yet yeah. he has to do that literally every super bowl getting that balance right yeah, is, is, does it is, really is, well. is difficult but no he's 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 done he's done really really well tv and radio i i don't see any reason why he won't be doing what he's doing in 20 years time yeah. um which is is fantastic and he should be Exactly. he's really good and Co- Colin's really good as well again coming with used to do with uh, Edith yeah well, I mean I've, I've, my I've, radio one knowledge is amazing it's, 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 it's better than mine <laughs> no I've, I've been lucky enough to work with Colin as well recently we've um, a production company that I work for um, we've been making a we've been, been making a weekly football show um, and I had to sort of cast it in terms of the presenters and, and put in Colin Murray and, and Dion Dublin who were both quality presenters mm. mates of mine I've worked with before and actually at the time 
we got Colin, I think, at a good at a good point because everyone knows how good he is. Yeah. And actually, he was sort of between things at the time because obviously he'd left Talk Sport mm-hmm. with the takeover, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah. He was doing he was doing some really nice uh, podcast yeah, series his podcast on his really own. Good, yeah. But we just sort of got him, uh, you know, and before the, the the Channel Five show as well. So we just got him at a good point and sort of said, "Do you fancy doing it?" So it was it was great for us to, I think get a really quality broadcaster that we ordinarily perhaps couldn't have got yeah. at the time you know and yeah, yeah him and him and Dion were great together so um, yeah it's, it's just it's nice it's nice working with it's nice working with people that you know and trust and you get to a certain age yeah. where you can't be bothered with <laughs> with any of the nonsense I, to yeah. be honest I love the way it's gone though because I love that norm normal people who seem like normal and there's no stiff yeah. upper lip are, are talking I mean I'd, I love Colin at the uh, the last Euros, mm. some of the stuff he did for Northern Ireland, like he was just mental. well, he's 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 so he's so enthusiastic, yeah. and and you just know you can just literally press press go on the camera, and you know that he's going to perform and he's going to give yeah. you something. Um, but yeah, I just I've just got the point where. I can't be. You, you just get too old and <laughs> too jaded to to be to be messing around with working with people that that aren't nice or yeah, good. Yeah. And 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 the one thing I, th- I think the only the only upside of getting older, as I can understand it, is that you actually have better contacts and you know good people in every department. And and when you when you look yeah, enough to you put together something. a show, whether it's this or something else, you kind of know that there's certain people you can go to. Yeah. So did you enjoy putting that together? I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. You know, and again, you know, back to the whole thing of of never ever sought to be uh, in front of the camera or in front of the microphone or anything like that. I was always really happy doing stuff behind the scenes to actually to to be sort of producing it and and uh, and putting it all together and doing everything from organizing people's trains or hotels or whatever like that or to booking all the guests and things and yeah it was it was i, I thoroughly enjoyed it and and hopefully you know if the opportunity arises that we can actually bring that ba- that show back um on the right platform with a with a sponsor as well to to obviously pay for it mm-hmm. would be great you know and if i can if i can couple that with what i'm doing at the moment for hits radio as well which is a great opportunity which i never saw coming in terms of going back to getting up at breakfast radio times but i am um but what's dad you back yeah um I never said never to anything. People always said, you know, for the last six years, nearly since since the the Radio One show finished, September two thousand and twelve. People said, "Are you, are you going to get back into radio?" And I said, "Well, I never left. I never left really. Yeah. You know, mm. the show came to a natural end, um, and it was the right time to go because of our ages, etc., and the fact that Radio One." was and yeah. is having to appeal to a younger audience in order to justify its share of the license fee there's, yeah. there's no there's no um uh, there's no secret of that um so it was the right time to go we'd had a good run there i did 16 years at radio one we'd done nine years nearly on the breakfast show we'd done five years on drive before then so it was yeah. a really really good innings and it came to a natural end there was no obvious place to go to next there's no obvious door to walk straight into so i did other things and and sort of you know behind the scenes type things and and you just sort of you you you, you graft don't you? you 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 know it's it's what you. Do. I think everyone thinks it's their glamorous though, don't they? When they when it when in real life it's it's. But you 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 can both testify same as me that it it's it's not you know yeah. yes yes there are there are certain things you yeah. look back on you kind of go God that was that was pretty special yeah. you know and you think of um, but for the most part. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that isn't glamorous in there, and the yeah. last the last five or six years have been anything but glamorous. But um, <laughs> but yeah, this opportunity arose sort of earlier on this year, and I was offered to audition for for a new show. Um, How on, did you audition on, for the radio? <laughs> well, it's 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 about kind of auditioning with people. With people to see the chemistry. The chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just about that because obviously certain people certain people will or won't yeah. work together. And I suppose it was just that. It's just a chemistry thing. It's just a combination thing. And so it was. That was the audition process. Um, and yeah, we launched on Monday of this week. Uh, so four days in. Um, four a.m. is very early. Unforgiving. Unforgiving. Oh, yeah. But uh, but no. That said, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, and it's it's very exciting to actually be be back on that side of things. Brilliant. And obviously. Coming off the back of a tough season for Everton, mm. I mean, but as you said before, we're looking forward now, aren't we? We are, you know. And and when I turned up here today, 
it's like how are you and it's like the, everyone's of the same opinion much better than we were a couple <laughs> of weeks ago or a couple of months ago because last season couldn't end quick enough um, uh, the Allardyce regime was never right from start to finish um, we're in a predicament that none of us saw coming mm. this time last year yeah. none of us saw that the Cumin situation was going to unravel the way that it did and none of us ever thought that we'd be then ending the season with Sam Allardyce who couldn't be couldn't be a worse fit arguably for the club than anybody mm. but it had to be done uh, panic measures came into effect because we were in trouble there was a time when you were looking and you were kind of going I'm not sure that there are three teams worse than us in the league at the moment and that's and that's the reality I still thought that last game of the season but that's, that's the reality weird. of it, so you just... know because you were looking and you were kind of going whoever it may be whether it was the likes of Swansea mm. or Palace for a while or whatever and you kind of thought but they're, they're all in, 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 in their own way they've all potentially yeah. got more to them than we have yeah. as, a, as a club and a squad at the moment you know we've got We've got talented players on paper, but they're just not performing and they're yeah. not gelling, and it's just not happening. Um, and it was it was a worry, but um, but now, yeah, it's let's let's hope. Um, yeah. Here we go again, bright new dawn, and um, the appointment of Silva is exciting. It's not as exciting as the appointment of Marcel Brands, mm. who for me is the most important addition signing whatever you want to call it to the football club because he for me provides the the backbone to to everything and the structure that will hopefully run throughout this for for time to come um silver we know is talented um silver we know plays exciting football he has a slightly iffy reputation in terms of the time that he spent at clubs before and also the tendency for the wheels to potentially come off at times um, but that said I think the prospect of him and Brands together as a partnership is is something that is um, is very exciting and certainly coming off the back of the Allardyce football that we close the season with then it can only be a breath of fresh air I mean I, I think when I look at it with Marco Silva we've said this before he, he's very successful in Europe he come here and I was speaking to Andy Gray the other day we were interviewing Andy Gray the other day and he was like well he took hold down but I don't subscribe to that he, they, he did they, they, they were in but trouble they were, they were in trouble already oh, they, they were, were gone they were gone and at least he gave them a fighting chance mm. and I remember talking to somebody recently I can't remember who it was but they were talking about Michael Dawson at Hull yeah. who was saying such great things about him as a coach and just said he's like no one else I've ever worked with before mm. um, the Watford situation well Arguably, it was us. We, <laughs> we you know, caused it. That was it. Yeah. You know, his his eye was, you know, his head was turned. Mm. His eye went off the ball, and it all it all collapsed. And he and the other thing with the Watford thing as well is he had six or seven injuries of, of players, Ma- major, injuries, major players, yeah. and they haven't got. Well, I think with all due respect to them, I think they, they seen got a deep squad. They yeah. seen their chance to sack him as well. They knew that he didn't really want to be there yeah, manager anymore yeah, and seen the chance and took it basically I think I think it was a I think it was the right decision for the club probably more so than it was for him I think you're right mm. I mean it's all being played out that obviously oh they were the injured party and, and what not and, and yes don't let's not get away from the fact that Everton did turn his head and actually took the wheels off yeah. the campaign there yeah, but yeah. I think they also as you say they thought now's the chance for us to get out of it and also get out of this situation with our uh, integrity intact as well mm. yeah it left, it left them in control basically of yeah. the situation yeah. rather than him walking away from them yeah. which would, make, would have embarrassed them but so he's not really if you think about it you know in this country at least as you say he went to Hull who were, who were, who were finished anyway he at least put a bit of fight into them and gave them a, mm. a chance at the end he went to Watford he did good things there for a while he had a small squad in a small club massively punching above its weight and getting some really really good results mm-hmm. um, that all then went wrong he's been out of football since then this this is the first big job and let's let's assume that he's going to be there for the, for the season <laughs> well, it'd be nice to, it'd be, but genuinely for him and for us it'd be really nice to see how him and we are rated over 38 yeah. games I think for him, he, I mean, he said in a, 
he was asked with the written press the other day, asked him the question about the fact he doesn't stay anywhere very long. And yeah. I thought he answered it very well. Yeah. It was like, it's you know, it's time for me to to put down some roots now. And, and this is the club that I feel I can do it with because of the ambition and the money and stuff. And that's so. the thing, you know, and Everton surely have been an attractive proposition for a lot of managers for a lot of years. And, and in my mind, the only thing really that's, that's held them back recently has been the ground. Because mm. if you think about, because for a long, long time, we were the only big club really that hadn't been invested. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And the only reason I could see for that was the fact that there wasn't the potential for growth with Goodison. Yeah. Um, just, you just can't do anything with it, as, as, as we all know. And then obviously with the prospect of Bramley Moore, um, and then the, the investment that that's attracted, is that now people know that there's no reason why mm. this club can't be built and mm-hmm. compete with the big boys, whether that be City or United yeah. or, or whoever it can be. Um, and so for a manager like Silva, potentially this is a really, really exciting opportunity to... to, to build sleep, 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 Sleeping giants, the, the, yeah. the wrong term. Yeah. I mean, that, that's putting too heavy a thing on it. But you know what I mean? There's, there's yeah. an element of, of a, a, a club with real potential for growth. Mm. We, we, we just need to become self-sufficient, really, yeah. and that's dealing with a louder. Um don't think I don't think anyone can compete with the city in terms of financial. I just don't think it can happen. But everyone's reining it a little bit. You don't have to look at the models of uh, Chelsea starting to rein it in. Tottenham, Liverpool, they have a almost like a, a sell to buy mentality. Yeah, yeah. And that, but but by getting better, that's attracted big sponsors, which yeah. has helped them help them kick on. It's, and that that's it, what we're waiting for. I think it's got to be run sensibly as a business. Yeah. You know, and, and and one of the things that that Marcel Brands has said in the last couple of days since his press was the fact that. Don't be don't be expecting reckless spending and mm. reckless is the word because that's what they did before. Yeah, yeah. They literally went out and they just spent a colossal amount of money, not necessarily on the right well, it's mm. clearly not on the right people. <laughs> um, and and it was just all a bit flash and a bit like, yeah. Oh look at us, oh Evan have got money, it's like, you know, throwing yeah. ten million here and thirty million yeah. there and whatever. Yeah. And and I like the fact that the brands have said that's not going to happen again. Mm. Yes, we are going to spend money and we're going to restructure, but again, back to the sell before you can buy thing, they've got to have a huge clear out and all of those decisions in terms of players out and players in have got to make, has, has got to make sensible, uh, it's got to make financial sense, yeah. rather. Mm. It's got to be a business decision because you can't just go and blow another 150 million, for example, this summer and expect it all to be yeah. right. And also, the, the wages are the biggest thing. You've got to get those wages off the, off. And I, I think just for a value set for for a principle, start saying to people, no, you'll be paid what you yeah. deserve, and there will be a hierarchy, and the best players will earn the best. Yeah. Whereas at the moment, there's far too many average players yeah. earning far too much money, not doing anything. You know, we were discussing this the other day. So in what other industry would you have 10, 11, 12 employees sitting around doing nothing, yeah. earning an absolute fortune? But it's the it's it's also it's the length of the contracts as well, yeah. you know. And this is a situation where it's not just so and so is sitting there on eighty grand a week, ninety grand a week, one hundred twenty grand a week, whatever it is. It's the fact that they've got three years left yeah. on their contract, two years yeah. left on their contract. I mean, you just can't even in the real world you can't even fathom that amount of money that is literally going out the door every yeah. week for players that are, are either not playing. Or mm. not contributing. Well, it shows yeah. with people. That I know Wayne Rooney is a case in point, not for us, but for Man United. Man United are still paying a big chunk of, no, yeah. of Wayne Rooney's wages and will when he goes to America. Yeah. But that's how desperate they are to not have him at the club because of all the. All, it, it's. It, it is incredible, and and uh, I think that's the thing that he needs, which will he will get in, he will sorted out. What did you make of Rooney? Rooney's return for the most part. I I personally wanted it and was quite happy with it in and a nostalgic and slightly romantic way of course yeah. I'm a football fan yeah. and I think anyone who says any, anyone who says otherwise uh, is kidding themselves yeah. I, I've no I actually sat here last, last year when we were doing obviously we were doing shows and I said I just want to sign him to see what happens Yeah. because if we don't sign him you'll always be sitting here going but what if you'll what if wondering. what if what if we should have always brought him back and I think I think there's there's got to be room for that in football if there's not then it, the, the sport's Will just become like any other sport, you know, boring I, and and unpredict. Uh, it needs to be unpredictable, mm. and the unpredictability becomes from nostalgia at times. And um, I think that's got to be part of it for me, anyway. It was it was exciting to to see him come back, and I think we were all 
of the same mentality. It is a it is a romantic, um, definitely blue tinted look on things, and we're all remembering back to you know when he broke through and this incredible kid yeah. who comes through the youth, and then suddenly he just blasted onto the stage. But you can now see, I think, why Mourinho was quite happy to see him go yeah. because. He's he's, he's he's he has he's, he's not got the same legs that he yeah. had. He's still got the footballing brain, but his yeah. legs can't keep up with that, unfortunately. You know, um, and the game has just moved on. And yes, he scored a few goals, and 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 he 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 did play a part in in the season for sure. Uh, and there were times where his experience and football brain were a real asset. Um, but it was clear from the press the other day that, um, yeah. that there's there's no there's there's no there's no consideration from brands or for Silver to the fact that he may or may not not stay. Mm. He's going to DC United mm. by all accounts. I believe he's already had his medical there. Yeah. So it's a done deal. It's just a case of actually. It's it's actually I think it's just a case of they can't sign until a ten. Well, it's not only that. Their window needs to. Yeah, open, yeah. I think it's also that case of him accepting it as well. I think he needs because he, he. I don't think he wants to go, and I think he wants it, wants it another year because he still feels like he's got it in him. Yeah. But it's almost that. I suppose it's, it's it's anything in life, isn't it? It's being told you're not good enough to do something anymore, mm. and you will fight that as long. And it's that acceptance that it mm. is going to happen. And I, I think, think, I think we, as fans, we, it's not quite retirement, but but everybody knows that it's it's the it's the waiting yeah. room, isn't it? Yeah. So when you when you when you go and you play in either America or you go and play in in a lot of players are going to play in India these yeah. days or playing in China yeah. or whatever it is. It's, it's it's the waiting room, isn't it? It's it's the last stage before. He'll be surprised though, because MLS is tough because they're fit. But mm. I think the thing for me, I'm glad he came back. He, he wanted to score in a derby. He achieved yeah. that. He wanted to score a hat trick for Everton. He achieved that. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm glad from that aspect. And like you said, there was games that he pulled us through. There was other games that he he, he didn't. And I think that's the the thing is that he was good for last season. There's a new manager coming in with a new identity and hungry, fit players mm. that can run around, mm. high press. And he doesn't that, fit into that's that. That's not Wayne's no. game. And and if someone's on, I, I'm, don't get me wrong. If he stays, I'll be I'll be quite happy yeah. for him to stay. But I understand the reason and why Everton are looking and going. And I think, to be honest, I think Silver and Brands have been talking for a while. And yeah. I think I think I think clearly because because now. Well, I think we, we, we knew a while ago that it was quite obvious what had happened, mm. that, that Silver knew that he was coming to Everton in the summer. It's like, right, well, go and go and make yourself scare somewhere. <laughs> um, but Brands and Silver have clearly been talking for longer than the last week or so. Yeah. Um, there's, there's been a plan put into place there. I thought that their I thought that their language was quite telling the other day during the press conference with regards to Wayne Rooney, who they spoke mm. about with very high praise and regard quite rightly but they re- I think Silver referred to him twice in that one press conference as a legend mm. and legend to me is very much a, a, a past tense term mm. um, and while the announcement hasn't been made that he is officially leaving Everton and joining DC United or wherever they obviously know that it's it's done and, and he, he won't be he won't be figuring mm. in their plans for the squad but well, Marco Silver even the he can't, well, they both kind of said it was done before I got here, yeah. which we, you know, when we know that, I think probably far the only, the only, he's led it. Maybe the only thing I'm sad about is I still don't think commercially they used them as well as they could. No, They've got no. as much attention. I'm, I'm, funny enough, the other day I was looking at um, a few Nike adverts and the old World Cup ones, yeah. and he featured in all of them and prominently all of them. You think, and that was only four years ago, he was on every cover yeah. of FIFA, and so. But do you not think that perhaps his off the field oh, situation yeah, oh, oh, that didn't, ruined didn't, it. didn't help matters? No, that, 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 that ruined it. The problem it. was that any any pedestal that they were going to put him on in yeah. terms of the the prodigal son returning yeah. was then somewhat undermined by what happened. Unfortunately, there was like two stages of it. There was like when he signed, there was the reluctance to make him an almost make him the, the face of Everton because yeah. they still had to convince a large section of the Everton fans that. Who was still angry at him, mm. and I think it would have, might have been a case of as the season went on and as more fans got used to him, increase the use of him in, in commercial mm. and and things like that. I mean, I'm rel- I'm reliably informed that overseas he was heavily used as the mm. face of Everton, mm. so that's good. Mm. So maybe that was curtailed by well, him being in the in the in, in the press in the, the press wrong, for the wrong, wrong reason. So at the end of August, yeah, yeah. so we don't yeah. just yeah exactly, and that was it. It was the timing of it. Yeah. Is that 
before any campaign momentum, yeah. and momentum yeah. could have could have been gathered, already he was there for all the wrong reasons, and it was just like, and as a club, yeah, commercially and and in terms of the perception to the fans and especially the young fans as well, can you do you want to be putting that person up in lights? Yeah, so and that's so I think that that was the issue with it backfiring, wasn't it? It yeah. was you know on a commercial. Um, a commercial aspect. Yeah. It's a shame, though. It is a shame. It is, it is a shame. It is. But he, you know, he's a. But he got the chance, and that's what I was saying yeah, last yeah. year. I just wanted to see him get the chance because yeah. we'd spoken it. to. Funny, we we'd interviewed Duncan Ferguson a couple of years ago, and uh, like we were talking to him off camera, and he just said every day. I'm asking him to come back because really? we were talking about we were we were doing something to do with his testimonial. It was mm. after his testimonial, and I, you know he, he had a, still had a few things knocking about. We talked to him about him playing. He means he loved it. He loved being back, mm. and he said every day I speak to him, and every day I'm asking him. And we knew from then yeah. that he was. We just knew that he'd come back because we just you could tell by. Duncan's enthusiasm for it and, and the hope he gives us and he just thought he'll definitely come back. Testimony was a turning point, wasn't it? Oh because because, mm. because as you say, that was a that was a chance for him to put the shirt on again and actually play at Goodison again and and feel yeah. what what it was like. Because obviously yeah. he's been back to Goodison umpteen times, but in the United yeah. shirt and it's it's not the same. And he no. got a he got a really yeah, good reception, did. didn't he, yeah. that day and all. And I think that was the day that he kind of went, Yeah, I wanna I wanna come back. And I think we just weren't financially in a position to bring him back. We we nearly had him a few seasons ago when Moise. Um, but then there was a problem. With, but, there was a, but there was a problem with those two as well. You know, there was yeah. a, there was all there was all that mither as well from 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 the book from years yeah. ago. So then that was never a particularly comfortable situation. No. Um, <laughs> like you though, I'm I'm pleased that from his point of view, more so than our point of view, yeah. the fact that as a sportsman. He was able to actually come back to where it all began, and give it one one last go. Because mm. I think that had that not happened for whatever reason, and, and mm. there's every reason why it might not have happened this yeah. last season, he'd have regretted that. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for and we will have always yeah. said what if, and I think, yeah. and I think so. Is that sometimes some things it all just have to happen, don't they? And if they don't yeah. happen, if they don't, if if it's not a massive success, but at least you've seen it. It wasn't a failure, though. Either. No, no, That's it wasn't thing. a failure. You know, it was. It wasn't. It Top wasn't. Goal scorer. Yeah, it was. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't quite what he or us would have dreamt about <laughs> mm. in terms of his return, but it was far from a failure. Yeah. Um, and you know, in many ways, as you say, goals, a, goals especially, he was one of the few shining lights in a in an otherwise very disappointing season. It essentially yeah. summed up our season. Yeah, it started off all yeah, all yeah. rosy, <laughs> and then by the time we got to the end of August, it was ruined. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically oh, our season. Well, like middle of September. Yeah, yeah. really basically encapsulated our season. <laughs> I think so. it, again, he was a victim of. It's, you know, too many number tens. No, not his behaviour. <laughs> I was going to say no, 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 no. that had nothing to do no. with what happened. That no, night. he's got an old his hand off. Too many something else, and it wasn't number ten. Yeah, yeah, old his hand off. He couldn't even walk in a straight line. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's move. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so obviously, looking ahead, then you know what? What would you? It's a, this is obviously a difficult one because we're still very early into the summer. But what? What do you think? Successful for Marco Silva and Marcel Brands this season. It's and what do you want to see as an Evertonian? It's a funny one, isn't it? Because um, in many ways, the league position that we finished in flatters the performance uh, of everything that, that we had in this last season mm. under Sam Allardyce. So, for me, you see you would automatically think that you would need a dramatic improvement upon that therefore you'd be looking at top six now top mm. six for the first season with a new manager and a new structure in place and also seemingly an entirely new squad yeah. who have all got to bed in I think is unrealistic so I would personally be happy with seventh, eighth, ninth again for the first season you know don't rush it let's get everything right let's get the club right let's get the squad right let's get the balance right mm. and 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 you know there's a huge amount of sorting out once doing and i don't want people to kind of think oh well you know we finished eighth under eighth under allardyce mm. and we end up finishing i don't know let's say ninth under silver however 
we all know it could be a much brighter ninth than. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Look, you know, it does. but there's also a lot of those players who bedded in this season or attempted to bed in. They might we might get the benefits of that next season. Yeah. But mm-hmm. you just fallen into the, the trap that I always fall into when someone asks me of the season. No one ever says let's win a trophy. <laughs> it's never. Yeah. It's no, no one ever does it, do they? I got asked the other week about the same thing. I was like, what do you expect now that they've come in? I was like, oh yeah, we're going to sign you. No one ever says. Let's yeah. try and win the league cup. The league cup, but, but, eh? yeah, and absolutely, and, and and you're right because that's something that can that's a separate campaign, which yeah. which doesn't. So you, yeah, you're right, but automatically, yeah, you don't think of it, no. and I don't think of it. All I'm thinking about is that particular league yeah. campaign, and the cups, I guess, are a bonus. But but no, you're right. If we could pick up some silverware, just to restore some pride yeah. and, and and almost a statement of intent in terms of what silver and brands are all about, then then that would be a good thing. But I I just want I just want stability. I want them to build a good platform yeah. that we can then move onwards. And I want to feel that even if we don't progress in terms of league positions this season, hopefully this time next year mm. when we're sat here again here having a brew, we'll look at. Don't leave it that long, Dave. No. Oh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be back before then. I mean, but when we yeah, are yeah. sat here next yeah. summer, yeah. is that um, is that we'll be able to say that things are in a far yeah. better situation? I, I think you're right. That's here with a trophy. We won't be able yeah. to break. I think you're right. I think you're right. It's, it's a, for me, it's a case of just going in the right direction and getting yeah. to the end of a season yeah, yeah. and going. This is exciting. This is going the yeah. place I wanted mm. to go. Instead of going, instead of like every every year for the last few. Although last summer we weren't, but every year going, well, we're starting again. We're yeah. starting again. Yeah. We're starting again. And we are. We are yeah, again, we are. but that's what I'm saying. Let's hope that next summer we're not seeing the goal. It's we're starting again. We're, oh, that was a great first season, and and let's. It's about progress, isn't yeah. it? For me, this season is about how we play, mm. how and en- entertaining. I mean, to us, I'm not bothered about the rest of the country. I mean, to us as Evertonians, mm. we in- want to enjoy watching our football yeah. team again. I want to see twenty shots a mm. game, not four. Mm. You know, and if we are like you, what you just said, right? We may end up eighth again, mm. but it'll be a very different mm. eighth if we play nice attack and mm. football. And like you've just said, you can look and go, you know what? This team is going somewhere because, you know, using Liverpool as an example, because they're, they're in the same city mm-hmm. and, and all that. And, and Jürgen Klopp came in when they'd finished yeah. eighth. His first, now we come in after we come in and after eight games. So we had 30 games. That's a lot of matches mm-hmm. to play. Liverpool finished eighth. Mm. They got to two cup fans, he lost yeah, them yeah, both, but yeah, they finished yeah, but they, eight. They got there. Though. They got there and you could see that he knew exactly how he wanted his team mm-hmm. to be. So he just got to yeah. that summer and went, right, we need one, two, three, and this will make us a bit better. Mm-hmm. He got them. Mm-hmm. Next season he mm-hmm. was fourth. Mm-hmm. And then he's built so and that's how it needs to be. Rather than going every summer, we need eight players. Yeah. To do it to do it right means it, it sometimes takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I think that no club in the history of the Premier League has demonstrated more grossly than us last summer that a huge outlay financially doesn't necessarily um, bring you a huge return mm-hmm. in yeah. terms of points or, 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 or whatever yeah. um, because that was just a colossal waste of money and it was just throwing money around yeah um, and now look at us we've now got to we've now got to try and sell mm most of those players for probably a fraction of what we paid for them and we've still got their contracts yeah. to pay up mm. you know it's it's just got to be done and i'm just hopeful that now we might have some sensible rational long-term thinking coming in the form yeah. of, of, of brands and, and and ideally ideally hope that silver is able to finally demonstrate the potential that I think we all know that he has with the right environment around him and hopefully we will be the right environment and create the right club for him to to really shine yeah. in that's 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 what i want for him there's a lot on us as fans i think as well though yeah. we, as fans fans got to have a little bit of patience and understand the process hopefully we will and you know because there's far too much knee jerk action it comes from out all over the place it comes from us at times it comes from everything because everything mm. we are such a reactive yeah. Everything's now, 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 now. Social media, now, now, now. That's now. the nature of the league as well, though. Yeah. You know, when you look at the way that the the, the clubs panic over over managers mm. and, and and dips in form, and you know we've seen it so many times with managers this season, last season, the season before, where suddenly a good side has a dip yeah. in form, and then suddenly the managers out the out, well, out the window. Hopefully, maybe that'll be another thing they've learned from this season is. Although maybe it was required this season, just to if there is a bit of a bad spell, not to panic because mm. the league is the way it is. If you get 
if you win three games in a row, suddenly you've gone from one place to, to six or seven up the league yeah. because of the way it is. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully we learn from that as well. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. It's got to start somewhere, yeah. right, hasn't it? Yeah. Let's do it. Anyway, big thanks to Dave for coming into Thank the you show. Very much. He's going to be a regular now. Hope he's, so. he's in Manchester, so he's going to be a regular. We're going to hold him to that. Um, and make sure. Hang on, if you told your, your partner that you're going to be in Manchester very regularly. She knows once a week. No, she doesn't watch this, tour. He's going to be in Manchester. <laughs> anyway, she'll be in bed or she'll be watching first. You day. can catch Dave, <laughs> catch Dave on Hit Radio. Gemma Atkinson's on it as well, apparently. I don't even know who that is, but Gemma Atkinson's on it as well, and some other fella. <laughs> so well he's in blue, by the way. Oh, Geffen, yeah, Geffen, Geffen Jones. Oh, Geffen Jones is yeah. in blue. Get Geffen in next time. Do you know what? It? Genuinely, next time, because he, he said today, he goes, Where are you going? I go, oh, I'm going off to do Toffee TV. And he's like, Oh, right, okay. So, anyway. so Geffen Jones knows Toffee TV. Yeah, of he's right. Like the Welsh. So, next time, bring me Geffen. And Geffen will both you, come over and bring Geffen. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a blue yeah, we'll, we'll, make, make, we'll make it a blue. Yeah. If right. we don't, we'll just. Make it a brew. If brew. she's not a blue, she'll have a brew. I don't go. know where to go there. Leave I'm finishing there. right now. Thanks to Dave. We'll see you later.